guys, welcome back to Aquatic Elements. In today's video, we're going to be draining down the Monster Fish Mega Tank. Now, as you can see from the title and thumbnail, it's time for a change. Now, this change may seem really, really soon. Uh, this tank's only been set up for around seven or eight weeks now. But I've made a massive mistake, and in today's video, we're going to go over that, and we're going to be show. I'm going to be showing you guys what I'm going to be doing to this tank. Now, when I set this tank up, I used play sand, which was super cheap. I think it cost me like 20 quid, 22 quid for 90 kilos of play sand. It was really dirty, gave it a really good clean, put it in the tank. A few water changes later, it became nice and clear. Now, you will notice the tank's a little bit murky because I have just done a water change and the bogwood is releasing tannins into the water. However, I decided not to opt for aquarium sand and I went for this play sand which the Stingrays absolutely love and it does give a lovely, real nice riverbed look to the aquarium, but I am not happy with it. Ever since day one of it going in, I like the look of it, but I was never fully satisfied with it. And on this channel, I love to experiment, try new things. As you can see, this tank is on the floor, which is really unconventional. And I thought I could get away with using this aquarium sand. However, multiple problems have arisen over the past couple of months and it is time for me to pull all of it out and actually just spend the extra money, spend the extra 150 quid, whatever I was saving, and actually just go for the aquarium sand. I am very glad that I tried it and did experiment with it, but unfortunately not everything always turns out how you expect it. Now the air bar at the back is absolutely awesome from Aqua Aeration Systems Limited, but it is pushing the sand over onto the log and keeping the sand in constant suspension within the water. Now this means that the water looks slightly cloudy even though it's not, and the stingrays are constantly stirring it up, moving it all around the tank. It's going into the filter, it's going into the filter media, it's going into the pumps, the UV, etc and it's just getting absolutely blown all around the tank and I really, really don't like it. When I'm cleaning the glass, the sand is getting stuck in the magnet, meaning that it takes me ages to clean the glass so I don't scratch it. And also when I'm trying to siphon the sand substrate, it is just getting sucked up into the siphon. So it's time for a change. I'm taking all of this substrate out in today's video. We're gonna be putting some new substrate in. Let me know down below what color you think I'm going to be choosing. We're actually going to be completely changing it up and I'm going for a very rogue substrate that I generally always avoid and tell people not to use because it can go bad and can go south very quickly. But I'm going to try it and another experiment is on the way. So let's start draining the tank. I'm going to be siphoning all of this sand out. I'm going to be collecting all of this substrate. We're going to be making sure it's nice and clean on the bottom. Obviously, we will have some substrate left over within this within this tank. But when I siphon in future and do those water changes, it's all going to lift out and the heavier, thicker, coarser substrate is going to stay in the bottom. So let's get siphoning. Let's start to remove all of this substrate and then we can show you what new substrate is going to be going into the Monster Fish Mega Tank. A few moments later. So now the first job is to start draining the tank down. What I'm aiming to do is siphon all of this sand off the bottom, which is going to be quite a labour intensive job. I'm siphoning it outside into these big buckets. The sand should settle at the bottom and then the water overflow and then I can move it and dispose of it if I want to, etc. So the next job, the first job now is to get all of this sand out. You might be able to see the sand is constantly in suspension in the water because of that air bar at the back it's constantly being rotated through the water the stingrays are stirring it up and it's giving this tank a cloudy kind of effect which i really really don't like and it's also one of those reasons why i'm going to be removing it so let's get the siphon started and i can start siphoning it out out of the aquarium i think it's going to take me half the day to do this but I want the tank to look good and then we can reveal the sand choice colour that I went for. As you can see, I used the hose for my Awazi Pond Vac as this gave me really good suction and allowed all of that sand to be pulled out really, really well. Instead of using a small PVC aquarium hose, I decided to use this hose as I could really get the sand out quite quickly. 
Now this sand is really, really fine. So it was clouding up the water as I was removing it and it just reinforced that fact of me taking it out of this aquarium. I think there was around 90 kilos in total. You can really see it stirring up. And because it's so small and so light, it's just in constant suspension within the water, which is giving it this cloudy effect. And especially on camera, it just doesn't look very good. So I'm going for a larger grain size, the same substrate that I've used in the past, but a different color. Something that's gonna sit on the bottom, the stingrays can still sift through it, they can still hide underneath it, and it can still give them that cover, but it's gonna make the tank look a little bit brighter, and give it a new lease of life, and it's just, in my personal opinion, gonna look a lot, lot better. So, managing to siphon out lots of this sand really, really quickly, and try, trying not to disturb the fish whilst I do it. But overall, the, this kind of siphon tube was much easier than using a small aquarium PVC tube, and it made the job much easier and a lot less time than I expected. So, hopefully you can see we've got a large amount of the sand out. I've actually just added about 20% of the water to fill it back up, and I'm gonna do the same again use the same temperature water as the tank not to stress the fish out and I'm gonna siphon all of that sand out. I also haven't mentioned, but I'm gonna remove quite a few of these boulders and rocks as well. I really wanna open the aquascape up whilst I am doing this and I feel like we'll be able to see the fish a lot better as well. And I really, really like the scape that I've done, but I do wanna open it up, simplify it just a little bit and make the, the feature sort of the fish in this aquarium. So I filled it up a little bit more, Time to keep siphoning that sand out. Hopefully we can get the bottom nice and clean and then we can get the new sand in. So as you can see, all of the sand is now out of the tank. I've removed loads of the rocks, loads of the stones from this end and also that end, just to really open the scape up. Obviously, I was gonna to need to do this probably in a year's time as the rays get larger. As you can see, I'm just filling up the tank. The water going in is at 25.5 to 26 degrees, so it's matching the temperature of the tank. Essentially, I'm just doing a massive water change. So, uh, as the tank fills up, I'm gonna get the new sand in. Now, any dust from the old remaining sand, what I will do is when I just siphon the aquarium, all of that dust will get picked up, and the new sand, which is a larger grain size, will stay down in the bottom, so we're not gonna have any sort of color contamination. And to be honest, I think I got about 99.9% .9 of it out anyway. Now, I am gonna do a big filter clean, probably in a week or two's time. I'm sure there's gonna be some substrate in there that I'm gonna siphon out, hoover out of there as well. But I wanna kinda of leave the filter as I've disturbed the tank massively and I really don't wanna upset the fish too much. So it's time to get the new sand. The new sand is very clean, so I do not need to clean it. I've used it many, many times before. As I said at the beginning, I've gone for a slightly rogue choice that I wouldn't normally suggest. So let me grab it and let's check it out. And here is the color I have opted for. Now I am always one for not going for a light or white colored substrate because when it gets dirty, it looks absolutely horrendous and I wouldn't really advise doing it. However, this tank, you probably see that it looks a little bit gloomy on camera and a little bit dull, and that is because of the tannins within the water from this massive piece of bogwood. And instead of going for a white color, I've actually opted for this sort of gray color. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera, but it's like a mix between a white and a gray. The stingrays are constantly turning the sand over, so I'm not too worried about it getting dirty or looking dirty. And I thought it'd really elevate the colors within the tank and really brighten it up quite a lot. So I've gone for 60 kilos of this. Now it's gonna be quite a fine layer over the bottom, but I feel like it should be enough. Now you will notice, obviously, as I mentioned, I've removed loads of the rocks from the tank and it is looking quite cloudy at the moment. I'm gonna put a few rocks around the air bar area to hold the air line down. And then we can get this sand in, get it filled up, give it half a day to a day to clear up and then we can check out the final product and I'm very, very excited to see what this tank's gonna look like. As you can see, I've just removed all the lids. I'm gonna give them a clean as well. You can see that the tank is starting to clear up now we've got all that fresh water going in and surprisingly the fish are doing really, really well. But it's time to add the sand now. Let's get it in and let's see what it looks like. Thank you. 
And there we have it. The new sand is now in the Monster Fish Meg Tank. You will definitely notice the tank is really cloudy. Now, this will settle within the next 24 hours. I've used this sand many times before and it's really, really not that dirty. Obviously, I could have given it a rinse beforehand, washed it all out in buckets, but this clears up really, really quickly. I've just got some filter fleece in the tank and it's gonna clear overnight. Now, I'm gonna show you the side angle because you can see the fish and the aquascape and obviously in the videos to come, you'll be able to see it when the tank is crystal clear once again. Now, first impressions, I am super happy with this substrate. It has really brightened the tank up. Also, removing those large boulders and stones has really opened the tank up and given the fish a lot more room. And now the tank looks a little bit empty, so I think it's time for some new fish as well. Let's head around the front of the tank. We can check out what it looks like, although it is a little bit cloudy, and we can also feed the fish at the same time. So hopefully you can see on camera, we've still got a massive piece of bogwood in, but I've really opened the scape up. Now my intentions were to open the scape up eventually, but I decided I wanted to do it now whilst I was taking all the sand out, give it a nice good clean, and I'm really, really happy with it. I can see all of the fish all of the time, and it's really given them a lot more ground space as well, and it stops any areas from forming where dirt could sit and accumulate. So I'm gonna give these guys some food, I'm gonna give them a little bit of prawns. Now it has been about four hours since I added the sand, so they've had time to adjust to their new surroundings and they are not stressed out at all, etc. I'm really looking forward to having this tank crystal clear, and I assume you'll probably see it on Instagram, uh, where I'll, I'll put a little video up of it, showing you what it looks like when it really clears up. Now, the next step for this tank, I think, is adding some more fish. Now, I don't wanna add too many fish, because obviously we've got the five male stingrays, which are gonna get quite big in size. Obviously, I've opted for males as they stay slightly smaller than the females, but they are gonna take up some, some size and put a lot of bio load into the water and there'll be a lot of bio load on that filter and obviously we've got our Asian Arowan as well. Now what fish do you think we should add to this tank? I've put this post up a few times on Instagram. There are a few fish I'm still considering. Datnoid is one of them. Also I'm looking at maybe a stormy catfish, Hemiarius stormy, the armoured sea cat or Thor catfish there's so many different names for it i'm thinking that will look really really nice in this aquarium some geophagus are still on my mind potentially just as like a little bit of a cleanup crew and maybe a gar something like that i do like this sort of rarer oddball fish so if you've got any suggestions then drop them down below but in the next episode hopefully you'll be able to see this tank crystal clear and see just what it looks like but i'm really really happy with it and i'm so glad that i got that old sand out it was a big job but the tank's looking a million times better and I cannot wait to see it when it is nice and crystal clear once again. Now let's give the fish some food. Alexa, turn off the flow. And we can give them some prawns. So I've just got some chopped up prawns here. This arowana goes absolutely crazy whenever I drop any food into the tank. He is such a greedy guts, but he's putting on loads and loads of size. So the prawns have just gone down to the bottom. I normally feed these guys a couple of times a day, especially as we've got some of the smaller stingrays as well. So normally I feed them a couple of times a day, but I'll bring the camera a little bit closer because it's probably gonna be quite hard for you guys to see on camera with this cloudy water, and then we can check them out. Now we do have all of the stingrays out the front. I think most of them have missed out a little bit on the food. We've got our pearl, our Beano pearl. We've got our two black diamond P14 hybrids, which do look slightly different. And then we've got our mini marble Matoro and our big black diamond who loves hogging the food. Now these guys are really putting on some nice size. They're really, really growing quite well. This is the biggest guy. I'd say he's probably around eight to nine inch disc, probably around that eight inch sort of mark. And the others are all between, I'd say four and five inches, maybe six inches or so, but they're doing really, really well. But that's a little bit of a short feeding for you. I will give them another feed this evening. As I said, they probably get a couple of different couple of feeds every day, mainly on just prawns and mussels. And that is it for today's video. The stingrays are doing really, really well. I'm happy they're nice and active, not stressed out, especially after changing all of that substrate. 
But overall doing really, really well. And as I mentioned in the next episode, you'll be able to see this tank when it's super clear and super clean. So I'm looking forward to that as well myself. But that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping.